Hello and welcome back, everyone. Welcome to a wrap-up session. I hope you had inspiring think tank sessions and good discussions. I hope you are as curious as I am to hear about the results. Now, we've just heard from Jens Wilhelm how digital business models are complementing traditional business models and how the newly founded Union Investment Real Estate Digital will create a digital ecosystem and service platform for the office real estate and the workplace in general. Jens Wilhelm also said that Union Investment is looking for use cases and setting new standards in the industry and seeing so many active participants, discussions, innovative ideas and positive energy, I'm really excited to see what collaborations and projects we will be seeing after today. Now, we would love for you to give us, our feed, give us feedback in the chat about the sessions, about this whole event. And at the end of this wrap-up session, we will have a quick poll to get your opinion. Now, I'd like to welcome all of the moderators from a think tank session. They're already standing by, you just can't see them yet because they will now share their impressions and results. And we will go through all six sessions, one by one, to get a quick overview of the discussions and the takeaways. And we will start with efficient decision-making. And uh, we'll welcome the moderator, the CEO of Architrave, Maurice Grasso. Maurice, are you there? Yeah, hi, how are you? Hi, Maurice, I can't see you yet, but I'm sure we'll see you in a second from you know what i've seen uh, i've switched to uh, the different the different sessions to uh, try to get in as much as i could um it's a lot about setting standards and and the difficulty of making the right decisions at the right time um so what were your takeaways what did you discuss what did you find um, good question. I mean, uh, prop techs are basically a re reflection of the real estate industry that they're operating in. And since that industry is local, prop techs tend to be local. So we took an, uh, an approach that looks at the industry from a more European perspective with, you know, Tina from Riggs, Patrick Woodall and others from, from London, Lars from Union Investment. And on the other hand, we had, um, um, I'd say, like a new breed of CEOs and founders, very, very smart with a lot of context around the market they're operating in, uh, not so much the learning by doing group. I, mean, I was really surprised by their deep knowledge and drive of the industry. Really pleasant people with a lot of interesting views, very very interesting to uh, discussions. And um, you know, we, we, we took the discussion in basically three, the overarching team was decision-making and we all need to make better decisions faster, obviously. So um, we took the discussions amongst three pillars, long-term, near-term, and a, a present view. So the long-term view was the system of leasing and letting, is that flawed in its root? Um, is it time to disrupt the whole system now and you know, think about new models going forward? Near-term, remote work, long-term business transformation for the latter, it was you know, less business travel, kill manual processes, digitize every customer and supplier interaction, and enable flexible work patterns. So all these will have an impact on how lease agreements are done in the future. So we looked at the, the near-term aspect of this and the present, you know, does an asset manager in, in this current time actually, you know, is the data available that they need to make good quality decisions fast? So um, the, the, the key takeaways were, you know, lack of sanitization, it's an evergreen. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm part of the, the, um, this PropTech Innovation Award since 2017. Lack of sanitization has always been, you know, the, the key problem for the lack of the, 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 the speed of technology adaption. You know, if the industry is agreeing on standards, technology can be rolled out quicker. Um, data is not available fast enough. I think that's, you know, a reason be, because of the lack of sanitization. And uh, I think that we'll need uh, more flexibility in asset management and how they do lease agreements in the future. And something, something that technology will be a huge enabler, um, obviously. But I think that these were the, the key findings. Very interesting. And for all of you that didn't uh, see that session, you can always, lay, at a later point in time, um, get the recording and see what happened there in detail. Thank you, Maurice, for now. Thank you. Now let's talk about the next 
think tank sessions, smart living, everything's smart these days. Um, obviously, the workplace is changing, but the way we live is also changing tremendously, not only impacted by the corona um, virus, but in general, smart living is something where we see a lot of friction between technology and the properties and the real estate market. So uh, let's hear about the discussion that took place in Smart Living. Um, I'd like to welcome from the class of 2020, Kristen Supancic. Are you there, Kristen? I am. Can you hear me? I can hear you. I cannot see you yet, but uh, I'm sure we'll switch on your webcam in just a second. But maybe you'll just start uh, telling us about the session. Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I started the session talking about how the future is is blending together, um, where we see the future is blended rather at the class of 2020, because we're seeing how living, working and learning pathways are constantly being blurred. And nowadays that couldn't be more true. Uh, so um, the session was really, really interesting uh, to see how we can uh, optimize uh, efficiency and optimize ma uh, use and value of space within living models. Uh, so it's great discussion. We actually continue talking even afterwards. So um, the people that we were not able to answer in the chat, we are receiving the questions right now and we'll also uh, insert them into the chat box just so everybody knows who uh, missed it. So um, I wanted to go over uh, some of the challenges that were brought up during the session. And um, one challenge was about sort of this technology versus real estate versus time. Um, because while technology is constantly changing and as we're seeing changing at a pretty rapid pace, buildings are being, redevelop are being redeveloped at a much slower speed. So it's all about finding this balance between yeah, technology, real estate and time. Another challenge that uh, was brought up was about user friendliness. Um, of course, in living space, spaces, and we're talking about everything from co-living to student accommodation to micro living uh, and so on. There's a broad, broad range of demographic groups, of tenants within the space. Um, and sometimes they can find it a bit challenging to actually uh, utilize the, the prop tech. So, um, we're seeing that as a challenge. A third challenge was about streamlining these solutions. So not only uh, integration within the space, but also with other prop techs and integrating with yeah the existing uh, systems that uh, maybe some living uh, oper uh, system operators are already uh, stuck with. And um, yeah, basically about being able to adapt within those. So I guess to sort of overview those three in, in one main challenge that uh, we noticed was that the PropTech product really needs to be uh, multifaceted and uh, adaptable and meet this changing need of multiple groups, the end user, the operator, the developer, the investor. So uh, there's definitely like an increase of collaboration and education of the product needed uh, to streamline these efficiencies. So, I mean, looking onwards, uh, a solution and, you know, forward thinking, uh, think about it. PropTech serves the tenants, the building operators, the investors. It gives all these groups the flexibility um, to maximize the use and value of space. So let's go with it. Digital technology needs to be an integral part of the business operations of real estate um, from the core. Uh, and uh, if planned accordingly, uh, it will help leverage any opportunities that arise in the future. So uh, the future is looking bright and um, yeah, we're excited to, to watch it grow and grow with it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chris. And the future is looking bright, I'd like to hear that um, and smart living definitely is just such a huge topic um, could be discussed for for hours on end so um, kudos to you to you know condense all of this into 45 <laughs> minutes um, but as you yeah. said you're still available in the chat so please um, use the chat functionality in the app um, we'll keep it open today and tomorrow now from smart living to um, an industry that is heavily impacted by this current situation, by the crisis, the hospitality industry. And um, we talked about connected hospitality in one think tank session. One of the moderators from Hofta was Simon Allison. Simon, 
what did you guys talk about and what were your key takeaways? I mean, we whizzed through the session really fast and in a way uh, it was necessary to kind of extrapolate back because we had three very different firms involved. But I think if you if you look at the real the industry that we have, firstly, as we've now realized, we have very high fixed costs and even technological solutions may often be a high fixed cost solution in an era when revenues can collapse. And let's face it, they do collapse every time there's an economic crisis or a black swan event. Uh, secondly, hotels are different all around the world, uh, as are other related uh, real estate sectors like service departments, hostels, resorts, etc. And you have to adapt to the market and to local legislation. So whatever prop tech you have needs to be adaptable to those different solutions. And finally, whatever technology you have, it needs to tie in with the physical real estate. Uh, and what we had was three very different companies. We had Limehome, which is basically taking people's apartments and making them saleable with a standard package. Uh, you had Inolaris, which is producing, you know, in-room technology, um, which also ties into other efficient energy efficiencies. And you had Apaleo, which was also basically looking at uh, a property management system. So what I think, and it really, it comes back to what Kristen was just saying. In fact, I think it's the word that all these sessions are going to have is flexibility. You need to have solutions which are flexible, uh, both for the end user and for, for the real estate itself. Um, and what you can see uh, is that basically the, the groups we had had all taken that on board. You know, Limehome was adapting its product for the apartments it was taking over. In Alaris had, had an in-room module, but basically was adapting it so guests could use it off their phones, off their iPads. Um, Apaleo was allowing hotel users who want to use their PMS to take those bits of it that were most useful and apply it to their properties. So what we saw was that the successful guys in the sector are the ones who are adapting with a flexible solution to different problems. Really fascinating. Um, and I'm sure you um, also have a lot of questions in the chat and you guys are also standing by to answer more questions if you have any questions for this uh, think tank session. Thank you very much, Simon. Thank you, Martin. Now, let's move on to uh, the next think tank session, uh, which is sort of connected to the hospitality session because it also involves a lot of property and that's the topic of smart and sustainable buildings because real estate market is changing. Everybody wants buildings to be sustainable. And when we add technology, this sustainability can also be very smart. Now let's hear what this think tank session um, talked about and we'll have, we have Benedict Scholler from Dresden Sommer, um, one of the moderators uh, standing by. And do we also have Nathanie uh, Osinos Vasiliadis? Or is it just no, you, Benedict? It's just me. <laughs> it's just <laughs> Sorry, All right, sorry so. for that. <laughs> that's, that's fine. <laughs> So what did you guys talk about? Uh, were there any surprises, anything that you didn't expect? Well, um, I was a little bit surprised. We don't really talked a lot about digitization um, or uh, the smartness of the buildings, more about what is really uh, the challenges of the future. Uh, we had EchoWorks, Kala and Park here with us as startups and uh, Pablo from Adaster and Caroline from Union Invest. And um, yeah, we discussed uh, what the crisis is, uh, is a catalyst for. And it's, um, we also had a little, a free little questions for, for the audience and were pretty surprised by the answers and some were suspected, some not. And um, well, the first challenge really is how will be uh, investments going into sustainability? And um, well, the conclusion is that uh, sustainability investments are really the biggest uh, challenge we have to. Uh, focus on, but um, the workshop also offered uh, the conclusion um, that the crisis, the crisis is a catalyst for sustainable investments. Um, another challenge which mainly came up from the um, from the startups was uh, how to meet regulations. Um, that's also a pretty interesting topic we didn't really expect. Um, what will be future regulations? Uh, uh, referring healthcare and also um, how will we work on the construction side and um, how will these regulations also with the green deal of um, of the EU affect um, our sustainable future and uh, another challenge um, everybody is um, of their startups is uh, focusing on is our fast pilots with higher risk so that was really like 
to say let's do fast pilots let's don't talk about always on the on the risk um don't um give us feedback over uh, after three years because then perhaps the startup ran out of money so we should uh, take a higher risk we now are under pressure of a crisis and we can now work together um, uh, to try things out and um, to do this uh, also together but also in an honest way and say okay if you have if you have a pr problem we should be also um, honest uh, that we uh, th th that we are having uh, the possibility to make errors and faults together so for us the, in the identified challenge most of um, from from the free the most important is sustainable investments so the green deal is coming up eu taxonomy is coming up the esg uh, um, is coming up so uh, sustainable investments will be the challenge of the future for the smart and sustainable buildings um, makes sense kind of a way and um, uh, we will only can do this in ecosystems uh, with fast pilots and the acceptance for errors and uh, we all have to work together like the competitors the partners uh, the venture capitals the universities the uh, the public system everybody so that we can like challenge the crisis and go into a sustainable and smart future very well said. I think that's something that we all want to see a more sustainable real estate industry, uh, a more sustainable world in general. Thank you very much, Benedict. Thank you. Now, let's move on to the work space. Well, we moved from offices to co-working spaces when all these co-working spaces popped up everywhere. And then came the crisis and we moved to the home office. Now what's missing at the home office, you know, when I speak from experience, I, I'd have to say mostly culture, work culture, culture actually being with other people and then the infrastructure. Most offices or co-working spaces have this techno technology, have the infrastructure that supports actually whatever we're doing at a workplace. So I'd like to welcome now, Sascha Wexon from St. Oberholz, who was one of the moderators for the future office think tank session. Sascha, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Thanks. Hi, Sascha. Okay, so what did you talk about at the future office? What were your key findings? Yeah, I mean, one of the one of the main points of discussion was how important is technology and uh, how much is it leading us into the into the uh, the right direction? And uh, probably no no big surprise for for most of you, the answer is depends. Uh, so it's both the human factor and the technology. Um, I think especially now this crisis shows us even clearer how important it is how people work and what they really need. Um, maybe even going back to the to the ordinary, how important it is to have your regular lunch break at a certain time, how important it is to have social gatherings, to have lunch with your colleagues or to have a not work related chat with your colleagues, um, how important childcare is, um, but also how technology can help us even in that black swan situation, uh, like with the crisis now, that we can use technology to measure distances, to, to be clearer about who's entering our spaces, how do they behave within our spaces. So um, the answer is uh, we need both. We need, to, we need the human factor, we need the technology. Um, one, Maybe not a finding, but uh, everyone was pretty pretty um, certain that employers cannot make a step back from the home office policies anymore after the crisis. So um, hopefully there we will see that it's not just allowed for for uh, people to work in the home office, but also that employers will support um, these actions, maybe by furniture budgets or something like that. Um, we could even imagine that uh, when going back to the office uh, is permitted again, um, it will it will feel maybe not like the holiday or, or a day in the spa, but it will feel special. And maybe thinking half a year back, most of you had their special day in home office. And, oh, this is my one day of the week where I can finally focus on something and get my work done. Maybe this is this will shift that we have this one day per week that we go in the office, finally meet our coworkers, have this very important discussion and meeting, um, and see a shift there. 
Um, and ultimately, when thinking of the office in the future, uh, we can't imagine having uh, fixed desk concepts where one person that comes to the office has their one fixed desk, but um, we will need to have more flexible concepts. I think flexible is the, uh, the most used word uh, in the summary so far. So um, that's also our uh, key finding. We need flexibility in the spaces um, and we need the combination of the technologies that we can use with the human factor and focus how to work. Yeah, thank you very much, Sasha, and I can certainly relate. I spent some time watching the Future Office Think Tank session, and like so many of you, I, I'm sure I have three kids, and um, going somewhere to work actually feels like a day at this bar because, you know, at home there's so many distractions. Sometimes it's difficult to be productive when you're um, at the home office. All right, so smart and flexible thank you Zasha. well let's uh, talk about the sixth think tank session smart retail and it also has smart in its name so what we've seen is a lot of industries have been halted by the pandemic but the digital transformation in most industries has actually been accelerated by the pandemic we've seen a lot of smart applications software hardware all these trends being accelerated the use of technology in general so um i'd like to welcome jens holreis one of the moderators from sonai sierra um uh, who moderated the uh, the smart retail session what did you guys talk about jens and what were your findings and maybe surprises yeah martin thanks and first of all uh, when i stepped into this 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 session um, then I first thought about what is showing me the situation itself. And uh, COVID-19 uh, yeah, overcame the social life with a lot of negative aspects. And then it was this mind, I went into the session and I was very surprised because all of them, all of this crop tech were very positive. They have only found out positive aspects during COVID-19. Um, they said nothing has changed too much. Um, COVID-19 gave the digitalization much more speed. Um, the sensitivity in private and in business are increased in terms of homeworking, in terms of working together, in terms of um, um, new technologies. And as you said, COVID-19, they saw um, them as accelerator, accelerator for the digital trend. And uh, so overall, they the people are working better together. But nevertheless, they have some, some also some aspects for the future. The first one is um, the monetizing structure of retail spaces. So what they said is we bring this, uh, for example, a shopping center so much and so new technology technology and so they want to have a, a kind of kpi for pricing and this is necessary because they can't pay this high rents so in the future the partner means um the the, the owner and the product has to sit together and think about what could be the kpi for the pricing of the rental space because in a moment um the customer and also the, 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 um, the owners, they have tight pockets and uh, it's very hard to convince them to follow them. And they said also, also it's a kind of balance, a balance uh, between a company who said, oh, no interest or other companies, they have much more interest. And this is the second point. Um, it's the openness that an owner should be have much more openness for new technology um, because um, they have the chance to, to wider up the range of customer experiences in terms of to put in different merchandising and they see it as a game for people, for visitors. And that was the outcome of this session and the solution that was also very interesting. Um, it's also the openness and the collaboration between the partners and between the prop techs, because what I have found out is that these two, uh, three winners are working together or, or will be working together in the future. 
and this is uh, one point which are um, raised up in our meeting that they want to have new monetizing and more openness by the owners. You bring up two very, very interesting points. Thank you very much, Jens. Openness and collaboration. And I think this is something uh, that is true for all different industries, for all of us in general, that we maybe can take from this. So as a summary, you know, from all the six um, think tank sessions, I take that, well, of course, the crisis will change where and how we live, where and how we work, and um, also shop, maybe, you know, when we talk about retail, where we spend our time in general. But the thing is, as long as we stay flexible, as long as we stay open and collaborate and connect and work on this together, I think we will see the opportunities and get out ahead. So thank you everybody for participating. Thank you all, thanks to all the, uh, the moderators. Really good discussions, really great ideas, inspirations. I now would like to ask your opinion. We have a poll for you. And when you go to the event app, you can click poll on the right side of the screen and then you can see the question that we have prepared for you. Um, and then please take some time to um, just click one of the answers, to take a few minutes to answer, and then we'll look at the results before the end of the session. Now, I'd like to welcome back Jörn Staube and Benjamin Ohe to talk about their impressions. Um, I'm not sure which of the think tank sessions you watched. So Jörn, Benjamin, I'm really impressed with the summaries and all the feedback from different moderators and industries. So, so many things to process. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I'm really impressed by the power, the spirit, and uh, the energy of all the groups. And I'm a little bit surprised that it seems that every startup or all these uh, discussions have been made for COVID or the post-COVID area, the time. It seems that everything will work. As there seems to be almost no concept that has been killed by this virus but it seems that everything might work better, faster, quicker. So that's my main takeaway. Benjamin, how was it for you? Well, from my point of view, I was really impressed by the number of participants in the different sessions. Uh, I, uh, to answer your questions, I really uh, switched between the different sessions a bit to see uh, also about the engagement, the quality and everything. Um, so also the technical quality of LinkedIn sessions, I think was, was very good. Uh, we had no major clinch. I think that uh, uh, is also a great takeaway because to see the engagement of the participants um, and one of the hosts of the session said it earlier um, that they still engage uh, beyond uh, the sessions right now and expanding the traditional conference beyond the frameworks that it's usually in is already a strong argument for a digital conference and the extension of it. And I was also very pleased, uh, as John just mentioned, to see that everybody kind of developed already a uh, post-COVID uh, situation answer to their, to their business and um, see that so many different participants from corporates and startups uh, were really um, involved today it shows me the importance of um, PropTech Innovation Summit and uh, uh, of course that is uh, a very nice uh, roundup for the, uh, uh, for the day to thank everyone uh, for the participation. I think it's been really uh, good and everybody has been really patient uh, to get involved into it from the startup as from, well from the corporate side. So I, I'm very pleased with that. And there were so many really, really good ideas. Uh, for example, in smart retail, I just uh, heard about, you know, Tuesday who are offering retail space to uh, co-working companies to do co-working while uh, a restaurant or a bar is closed and then use the space while it would be otherwise inactive. So, so many really good ideas. And uh, you are offering, with German Tech, you're offering PropTech support. Um, so where do you specifically see a need uh, for assistance and, and guidance for these startups? Yeah, well, I think um, uh, one of the uh, birth motivations of German Tech in the beginning was uh, to say that all of these different sectors, the corporates, the startups, the universities, the governments, they all speak different languages. So it, it's great to have a translator at hand, and I think that's uh, where we usually come uh, come in. And um, we, as well as Union Investment, uh, 
I think are super happy to connect um, the startups with relevant stakeholders, potential clients, similar like we did with um, Green City Solutions or even Architrave, where Union Investment ended up investing into, uh, which were one of our finalists uh, before and award winners. So I think also with our World Changes in Tech series, uh, where we bring those founders on stage, give them um, an audience, a better possibility, uh, particular focusing on the sustainability through the technology and the solutions that they bring to the table is a key driver for them because we help them to position them really as change makers and thought leaders in the, uh, in the tech community um, with, our, uh, with our programs. Yeah, and there were quite a few of your colleagues joining the think tank sessions, actively talking about what Onion Investment is doing. Um, so, you know, did you personally get any inspiration for new projects or formats? What kind of sessions did you watch and what's next for this year's participants and finalists from Onion Investment's point of view? And of course we did. So personally, in all these uh, various fields we can do it. It's retail, as, as you mentioned, you like it, office and all these. And what we do in general is that we offer feedback to all participants. We are offering personal meetings with all the finalists. And of course, we would be more than happy to start a pilot. And even if it's not with union investment, we can give guidance, as Benjamin mentioned, who to talk to, uh, so the network aspect. We really want to do follow up. So a big thank you to all the participants. It was great. Thank you, Jan, and thank you, Benjamin. Now let's quickly look at the poll results because um, many have been participating. Uh, just uh, take a look at my screen here because I have the results here. Um, so number one was, oh, and we see it here, okay. So the question was, what effort, uh, what effect do you expect the coronavirus uh, pandemic to have on digital transformation in the real estate industry? Now, please tell us which trends you think will be accelerated. And number one is the digitization of internal approval processes. So that should hopefully make it faster uh, for everyone involved. And then at number two, we have the digitization of contracts. Um, which then would also involve things like blockchain technology, making it more reliable. And then uh, number three, oh, sorry, that would be 28. And then we have, oh, at 43%, the development of database decision making systems and the use of tools to increase data consistency and transparency. Really, really interesting. Um, so keep participating, keep asking questions in the chat. You can also still watch all the videos. We'll try to get them online as soon as possible. A huge thanks to all of you participating in the Think Tank sessions, to all the moderators. I hope you had a great time, learned a lot, met future partners, maybe new, made new friends. Now this concludes our official program for this year's PropTech Innovation Summit, but of course the app will be still available, you can still see the participant list and I invite you to really network with all the people, contact them, use the chat, watch the videos, they will be available also like the live streams on Vimeo and the event website. Now, thank you, Jon, thank you, Benjamin, thanks to all the partners once again, thanks for going on this digital journey with us today and for making this first digital in, uh, event possible and such a success. I hope to see all of you next year. Stay safe, stay happy and stay connected. Goodbye. Thank you, goodbye. Goodbye, thank you.